Hey there, welcome to episode 85 of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is just some of my new stuff. Um, after a couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months of kind of not getting a whole lot of stuff, because when COVID hit, um, not only did the mail kind of slow down, but uh, stores weren't open, um, so I just wasn't getting a whole lot of stuff. So I posted a couple of videos reviewing some older things in my collection, like my Creos and my Spawn figures. Um, but now that stores are starting to open up and things are starting to arrive in the mail, um, I've been kind of just inundated with new toys lately. Um, I got the new series of G.I. Joe Classified, which I posted a video about uh, about a week ago. Um, and I've got a whole bunch of other stuff since. Uh, as I sat down to record this video, I realized it wouldn't all fit into one, so I'm actually going to probably break this into two new stuff videos. So this is new stuff part one, and it's not really in any particular order that I received it. Um, I just tried to lump collections together. So I got a few uh, Star Wars Black Series to talk about, I got a few Funko Pops, and a few other kind of odds and ends that I'll talk about in here as well. So. Um, yeah, I'm going to jump right into that stuff. Um, before I do, though, I just want to quickly mention, if you uh, frequent my channel, you might have noticed that uh, I've posted two other videos since episode 84. So I posted episode 84 about the G.I. Joes. Um, and I have got some feedback over time from various sources that, like, my videos are maybe too long, you know, and YouTube is kind of meant for quick little snippet videos. I tend to disagree. What I like to do here is create, you know, an episode that's worth your time. You can sit down and watch this every week. Uh, if that's not your cup of tea, then fine. You don't have to watch it, but that's what I hope for. Um, I want to have like a, a channel. Um, but I have taken it to heart that if sometimes people just want to see a review of a toy and they don't want to sit through me rambling on for an hour. So what I've started doing is posting a couple of what I'm just calling quick reviews right now. So I did a quick review of Snake Eyes from the G.I. Joe Classified, and that was separate from the hour-long video where I covered the full wave. And one of the figures I'm going to talk about in this video, which was the brand new Conan the Barbarian figure from Super 7, um, I got that just yesterday, and I posted a quick review of that as well. So obviously I want you to watch this whole episode. I appreciate those of you that do. Um, but if you're just looking for a quick little snippet, you can either fast forward through this video till you get to the part where I'm going to talk about Conan, or you can watch my uh, quick review of Conan, which is just, it's a 10 minute, it's a lot more concise um, without a lot of this kind of fluff and without an intro and everything like that. Um, if you are a regular viewer of this channel, you probably don't need to watch the quick reviews because it will probably just be a lot of repeat information of what I'm going to talk about in my weekly hour long episodes. Um, however, I am not just taking the 10 minute segment out of this video and putting it separately. It will be a separate video. I'll film something new. There will be some new content. So if you want to watch not only the full episodes, but the quick reviews, that's great too. And I appreciate it. But uh, yeah, I'd like your feedback on all of this. Do you, is there more of you that think these episodes are too long and you'd like me to do shorter stuff? Do you like the long episodes and do you like the shorter ones? Do you not want me to post the shorter videos? Um, I'm just open to feedback and I want to see what you guys are interested in. So I appreciate any of you who uh, leave comments uh, below. Anyway, that being said, let's move on and start taking a look at my brand new stuff. So here we have Count Dooku inside of the box. There's not a whole lot to see here. It's what we've come to expect um, from the Star Wars Black Series the past few years. There is some artwork down here in the corner. Otherwise, pretty basic black and red. You have the numbering on the side here. And then we get the same graphic as well as a little bit of a bio on the back. So here is Count Dooku outside of the packaging. So this is part of Hasbro's 6-inch Star Wars Black series. So you'll remember Count Dooku. Uh, he first appeared in Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Um, he was formerly a Jedi. Um, and then he became a Sith apprentice known as Darth Tyrannus. Um, but that was kind of in secret. He was known as Count Dooku, and he was working for uh, Darth Sidious. And uh, yeah, then in the next movie, uh, episode three, Anakin Skywalker lopped his head off. So this guy was played by Christopher Lee. 
uh, who we unfortunately lost in 2015. And uh, yeah, Christopher Lee is a, is a cool actor. And uh, I got to say, I was a little disappointed when we got Dooku in Attack of the Clones because I loved the look of Darth Maul. Like when those trailers for Phantom Menace first came out and I looked through the books of concept art, um, I just thought Darth Maul was the coolest character they'd ever come up with. I thought he was going to be so great. And then he got killed in the first movie and barely got to do anything. And I was thinking, man, you know, they killed this guy and they have a whole new trilogy to go. Like, how are they going to come up with somebody even better to replace him? And as much as I love Christopher Lee, you know, we got this old man in a brown cape. And we're like, really? This is supposed to be the guy that replaces Darth Maul? It was kind of a bummer. However, Christopher Lee is pretty cool. Like, uh, this guy is most famous for playing Dracula, you know, like back in the 50s, 60s, and I think right into the 70s. Um, a lot of people probably also know him from playing uh, Sauron from the Lord of the Rings movies. Um, I think probably my first exposure to Christopher Lee was in Gremlins 2. <laughs> um, but probably my favorite performance from Christopher Lee was in The Wicker Man uh, from 1973, which is actually a movie I never saw for a long time. I only saw it just a couple of years ago, and it was a really cool movie and a really crazy performance from Christopher Lee. So anyway, about this figure, um, like it looks like Christopher Lee. I think that likeness is really well done. And uh, the whole figure is really nice, which is why I bought it. Because Count Dooku is not one of my favorite characters. And when I started collecting the Black Series a couple of years ago now, I kind of vowed not to buy old guys in capes. I have a huge collection of three and three quarter inch Star Wars figures where I would buy pretty much everybody. So I have so many Jedis, just guys in robes. And I have senators and battle droids and a lot of characters that I didn't necessarily love but I just bought them to be a completist so when I started buying Black Series I was like I can't believe I'm going to start collecting Star Wars again but when I do I'm only going to buy cool looking robots and aliens I'm not going to buy a bunch of old men in capes and yet here I am buying an old man in a cape but as far as old men in capes go they don't get much better than this like I think this guy looks great it's a really nice figure so not only is the likeness excellent but he's got this cloth uh this cloth cape which uh hangs really nice it's got a nice color to it um the sculpt on the body it's pretty simple but it's accurate to the screen from what i remember and i really like the color of it you know it's not black like you'd expect to see with most of these sith guys it's kind of got a nice brownness to it which just makes him look a little different from the other guys on my shelf and uh, then he's got his cool kind of like lightsaber which is a little different with that curved hilt um, yeah, as far as articulation goes, I'm not going to go through everything. I imagine it's the same as pretty standard for all black series, which is pretty good articulation, but, uh, I just buy these guys for display purposes, really. And even though he was flipping around quite a bit in the movie to the point of it being a little ridiculous, uh, I don't think Count Dooku really needs to move around all that much. So even if he didn't have a ton of articulation, I wouldn't really mind, but yeah, this figure moves around pretty nicely. Now, as far as accessories go, he's got the lightsaber that I mentioned, and then he also has this piece here, which it's just another blade for his lightsaber. So rather than have the single blade like that, you can pop that out of there, plug this in like so. And basically that's just supposed to give a sense of motion. So it looks like he's swinging his lightsaber around. So I guess that's cool maybe if you were doing a diorama or something, but I would never just display him with this lightsaber because it looks kind of weird. So I'll stick with the single-bladed lightsaber. But uh, yeah, I think this is a pretty great figure. So there you go. There's Count Dooku. And here we have the Imperial Probe Droid inside of the box. Now this is a deluxe figure, so it's a little bit larger than what we see with the standard Black Series. Like, let's bring Dooku back up here for a second. And you can see, uh, size-wise, the Imperial Probe Droid is about twice the size of Count Dooku. Um, otherwise, the box is pretty much the same. So there's a little bit of artwork down here in the corner. But then the standard, standard uh, red background, black box. Um, you got the numbering on the side. 
the D3. I assume maybe that's for Deluxe figure. I'm not sure. And then we've got a little bit more. You see a bit more of that artwork on the back as well as a little bit of a bio for the character. And that's about it. So let's pop this guy open and take a look at him outside of the packaging. So here is the Imperial Probe Droid out of his box. Now you may recall this guy appeared in Star Wars Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, it was right at the start of the movie. So after the battle at the end of the first Star Wars, where uh, the Rebels blew up the Death Star, uh, and then they were mounting basically another attack, so the Rebels had a secret base, and the Empire was thinking, we got to track these Rebels down and destroy them before they can launch another devastating attack. So because they didn't know where the Rebels were hiding in the galaxy, they sent out thousands of these probe droids to probe the universe and hopefully report back that one of them had found the Rebel base. And one of them eventually did on the snow planet Hoth. And I'm guessing this is supposed to be that specific probe droid because the little display base he comes with is a snowy base as you would expect to see on Hoth. So this is a really cool looking figure. And I didn't realize until I was kind of uh, reading up on this guy before I did this video, that this was actually designed by the famous artist Mobius, who uh, I know from his comic book work. So yeah, that's pretty cool that uh, Mobius designed this uh, this figure or this, this character. Um, and yeah, I've always loved the look of this thing. Like when I was a kid, Empire Strikes Back was just such an amazing movie. And seeing this creepy thing kind of hover across the horizon there on Hoth was just really cool. And I wanted a toy of this thing. They actually didn't make a toy of it in the vintage Star Wars line. But I had another droid. Uh, it was The droid is called FX-7. And it's actually like a medical droid. But it had all these little legs that came out and were attached to the base. It didn't really look like this figure. But I thought it was supposed to be this figure when I was a kid. So I didn't use FX-7 as a medical droid. I used it as an Imperial probe droid. And you might think, well, you're an idiot. That figure doesn't look anything like this thing. But there was a lot of that in the vintage uh, Star Wars toy line. After all, my favorite figure from the vintage line was Walrus Man, who really looked nothing like his, uh, what he, how he appeared on screen. So yeah, it wasn't unheard of that a figure would not match the actual on-screen appearance of a particular character. Um, so yeah, I think the first time that we got the probe droid in plastic was during the 90s, which uh, was the Power of the Force era, back when the original movies were re-released in theaters. Um, and I thought I bought the probe droid then, but I, I couldn't find it when I was digging through my old Star Wars toys, so I don't know. I don't think I would have gotten rid of it, so maybe I never had it, or maybe I've misplaced it somewhere. But uh, anyway, this is now the only probe droid in my collection, and uh, I think it's really cool. Um, there's not a whole lot to him, like size-wise, the he stands pretty tall because you, you plug him into this clear base. Um, so let me bring Dooku out here again, and so you can see he's... Compared to one of these characters, he stands pretty tall. But when you take him off of the base, he's actually shorter than the character there. And, you know, these guys here in Canada are priced at 30 bucks. This is priced at 45 bucks. So, you know, I don't know if it really warrants the extra expense. I don't know if he's that deluxe. But um, that aside, I do love the look of this figure. Like, there's no real obvious front to this figure like you'd think you'd want to line his eyes up to the front but there's eyes all around this head in a complete 360 which makes sense given his function as a like a probe droid is that he's supposed to be uh, looking everywhere so this really covers that uh, I think it looks awesome and to be honest it wasn't until I had this figure in hand and I was fiddling around with him that I realized you know what the uh, the robots from the matrix like those squid droids they must have been inspired by this design because there's a lot of similarities. So anyway, as far as articulation goes, so the head spins around uh, and then all of these little legs are articulated, sometimes in multiple spots. So it moves there, moves there, uh, again, moves down here, and it can swivel around. 
So there's a good bit of movement on there. So you can do some poses with this guy. Um, but at the same time, he's kind of stuck on this peg. He doesn't stand very well on his own. And uh, so yeah, even though you can move his legs around, there's there's only so much you can do with the Imperial Probe Droid. But uh, I'm glad I finally have this guy, and I think he's gonna look really cool up on the shelf. Now I've got one more Black Series figure to show you. This is the Heavy Infantry Mandalorian. And when I started this video, um, I actually didn't know this figure was gonna be included in this video because I'd started shooting this afternoon, and then uh, I kind of set the video aside for a little while because I was going over to my buddy Miguel's house to see his new puppy, who is adorable, by the way. But Miguel lives over in Dartmouth, which there's a Toys R Us over in his area. So I thought, well, I haven't been into Toys R Us in a while. I'm going to pop in there. And anyway, I found this heavy infantry Mandalorian. So I figured, well, now i got to come home and plug this into the video that I'm halfway through. So here we go. This is brand new for me. I just got him like an hour ago. So this guy here was featured in the Mandalorian TV show. There's really not a whole lot to be said about him. This little bio on the back probably covers pretty much all that we know. Um, I'm not even 100% sure that this figure is supposed to represent a specific character or if he's just a whole uh, kind of squadron of heavy infantry Mandalorians and this is what they all wear. I think there was one guy wearing this in the show, but I don't know if they ever addressed him by name, and I can't be certain that uh, it was all just one guy. It might have been a couple. And this character is so new, I don't think they've had time to expand on him in any of the fiction. So I don't think there's any novels or comic books or anything that address him specifically. So pretty much what we saw on screen, where he was just kind of a background character, is all we really know. So uh, this guy, like uh, the probe droid, uh, he's got a deluxe number. So this guy was actually released before the probe droid, because he's D2, where the probe droid was D3. And, uh, yeah, I'll just mention the price again. So, yeah, this guy was $45. Bucks, um, and I I really have a hard time paying that. Because when I look at his accessories, like, at least the probe droid was kind of a bigger, weirder shape. Um, this guy is a standard figure, essentially. And then for weapons, like, this isn't that elaborate. Like, if he had a big, you know, missile launcher on a tripod, you know, a big, hefty accessory... I could justify the price a little bit more, but really he's just got a gun and a backpack. There's not a whole lot that feels deluxe about this guy, but who knows? Maybe I'll feel differently once we open him up. So let's do that. Okay, so here is my heavy infantry Mandalorian outside of the packaging. So I stand by my initial assessment that he does not feel like $45 worth of plastic, but he does come with more than most Star Wars figures come with. I find most of these Black Series they either come with a, a lightsaber or maybe a rifle and a pistol. Um, this guy's accessories are a little bit more elaborate. Like he does have this backpack, plugs into the back. This hose here, it plugged into his arm. And then he's got this big tube attached to a pretty big gun. But yeah, still, I think maybe he could have been five bucks more instead of 15 bucks more. But regardless, uh, I'm excited to get this figure because he did come out. Uh, months ago, like closer to when The Mandalorian was actually on TV, uh, you know, around the start of the year. Um, and a friend of mine found one at Toys R Us way back then, but then he's become really hard to find. Um, and then maybe a month or month and a half ago, Big Bad Toy Store, which is the online store where I do most of my shopping, they put some up for pre-order saying they were going to get some more in. So I pre-ordered them there. So I knew I was going to get him eventually, but uh, I had no way of knowing when kind of big bad was going to get him in stock so now that i found him here at toys r us i canceled my order from big bad toy store just because um you know it saves me on the shipping anyway and it saves me the wait time so yeah i'm glad i found this guy because he, he does look really cool like he looks a lot like boba fett who everybody already loves and you know a lot like the mandalorian who now he's everybody's new favorite character except he's got this kind of unique blue armor uh and He's got this bigger, bulkier design. Because the, all the other kind of Mandalorian guys, Boba Fett, uh, Jango Fett, and the Mandalorian, were all kind of similar physiques. This guy does feel like he's probably a bigger dude under this armor. And, uh, you know, so he's got a little bit of weight to him. 
And uh, I like the design of him. Like you can see his armor is kind of weathered. He's got some paint chips on him. Like it looks lived in. He's got some kind of weathering on the armor bits here. The knee pads are kind of scuffed up. He looks cool. Um, the weapon looks good. I'm not entirely sure if I've got him holding it properly. Um, it looks like maybe it's a two-handed weapon. I do worry a little bit about this hose. Is it going to snap over time? Because I've seen similar hoses on other figures break. Um, what else can I say about this guy? I don't know. I haven't had a chance to really move him around, but it looks like he would move pretty well. He's got the double-jointed double jointed knees there, so good range of movement. Uh, you know, his ankle's moving pretty good there. Uh, everything else looks pretty standard. He's got the kind of mid-torso crunch. Bends of the elbows, the wrists, the head. So yeah, he moves well. He looks cool. Uh, what more What more can you say? Pretty cool figure. Here we have the Captain Crunch Funko Pop inside of the box. So a little bit of artwork on the front. Again, another image of the figure on the side. On the back, you can see the other figures that are available in this wave. So there's another Captain Crunch that's holding a bowl of cereal as well as a couple of his uh, friends and enemies. So that's all there is to that. So why don't we pop him open and take a closer look at him. So here is Captain Crunch outside of the box. So, you know, he looks like Captain Crunch. Um, one thing that I do find a little odd about him is these Funko Pops have a very kind of definitive look where they have a very big head and a smaller body and I don't necessarily feel that this Captain Crunch has that like he looks pretty to scale like his head just isn't quite the same shape as most other Funko Pops like here's a Batman for comparison and uh, I don't know if you can really see what I'm saying but yeah it's just uh, it looks a little odd to me like it doesn't look bad but he just doesn't really blend in with the other Funkos and their kind of unique shape um, the same is true of one of the other ad icons you see here. That's the uh, kind of the subgenre that Captain Crunch is part of. Um, I bought the Kool-Aid Man a little while ago, and he obviously didn't really work for the normal Funko Pop format either. So I don't know, just uh, just something to notice. So I don't have a whole lot to say about Captain Crunch because what can you really say about a serial mascot? Um, Although I will tell you that Captain Crunch is legitimately my favorite cereal. Although Captain Crunch, the character, is not my favorite uh, mascot. I always liked Toucan Sam. Um, I actually used to collect Toucan Sam memorabilia when I was like a kid and even into junior high and high school. So I had, uh, I don't know, stickers and magnets and keychains. Any kind of little Toucan Sam junk you could get out of a cereal box, I collected it all. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the Toucan Sam uh, Funko Pop, and he's actually pretty expensive to buy now, but uh, hopefully I track one down one day. Um, so one thing that's interesting is because I didn't know much about Captain Crunch, I decided to Google him to see, out, to see if there was any uh, interesting information I could share with you guys. And one thing I learned is that his full name is Horatio Magellan Crunch. Uh, the boat that he captains is the Guppy. And these other guys on the back of the package that I pointed to earlier. So the Crunchberry Beast, I don't know much about him, but I, I seem to recall maybe seeing him somewhere before. But the only image I could find of him is it looks like he was probably put on the box when Crunchberries were first introduced. And it looks like that would have happened before my time. Captain Crunch has been around since 1963. So Crunchberries were probably sometime in the 60s or 70s. But as for this other guy, Jean LaFoot, I don't recall ever seeing him as a kid, and I assumed maybe he was just a villain that showed up in some old commercials, but it turns out he had his very own cereal, which is pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, now with Captain Crunch, I remember in the 80s, he often fought the Soggies. Those were his enemies in the commercials back then and they were just these kind of like wet globby things that were always trying to make the crunchy cereal soggy and uh one of my favorite little prizes that i got out of the cereal box 
was this sticky soggy that you could launch and grab things. Now I could not for the life of me find an image of it on, uh, on Google anywhere. Now I did find something similar. There's some images of sticky hands that you could get out of cereal boxes. But with Captain Crunch, it was specifically, it was white. And the, at the end, it wasn't just a hand. It was actually the soggy character with two little arms coming off of them. And uh, yeah, I thought they were really cool. We had a few of them, me and my brother. And after, after a certain amount of time, they got kind of gross because they would get little hairs and everything all stuck to them. But uh, I did love those sticky little soggies. So yeah, it's kind of weird that I can't find them anywhere on the internet. Uh, just another another little interesting tidbit about Captain Crunch and the Soggies is I do remember one of their ad campaigns where Captain Crunch had gone missing, kidnapped by the Soggies or something, and they used to run this ad in Marvel comic books all the time about Spider-Man fighting the Soggies trying to rescue Captain Crunch. Anyway, let's move on to the next thing. So here's another Funko Pop. So this is Stanley Hudson from the TV show The Office. Now, The Office is is one of my all-time favorite shows, if not my all-time favorite. Um, I absolutely love The Office. I've never stopped watching it. Um, I used to watch the British series, and when it came over to like the American version, I started watching it right from the beginning. Watched it all the way through to the last season, and uh, now that it's on Netflix, me and my wife watch it all the time. Like a couple of times a week, at least. We never seem to get enough of it. So when Funko started making uh, Pops, of the office characters, uh, I was really hoping that we would get everybody in the office. The first wave, which you see on the back of the package, had Michael, Jim, Dwight, Pam, and a couple of the others, but it was missing some of the key characters, like Stanley and Meredith, and uh, so I was really hoping that they would eventually go back and fill in some of those spots, and so I'm happy to report that they are starting to do that now. So here we have Stanley Hudson. So here is Stanley outside of the box. So Stanley was played by an actor named Leslie David Baker, and Stanley is one of the many salesmen at Dunder Mifflin. And I think this figure does a really good job of capturing him. It's got his kind of tired, just exhausted eyes. Um, he's got his crossword puzzle in his hand, which is a key element of Stanley because he's always seen doing crossword puzzles in meetings. And then specifically here, He's got a pretzel. So that is from one specific episode where they give away free pretzels in the lobby of the office and Stanley is quite excited about it. In fact, his exact quote is, I wake up every morning in a bed that's too small, drive my daughter to a school that's too expensive, and then I go to work to a job for which I get paid too little. But on pretzel day, well, I like pretzel day. And that's about as excited as Stanley tends to get. Now, this particular figure, you might have noticed on the box, it has an exclusive sticker. It says exclusive to EB Games in Canada. So I don't know if that means that uh, anybody in the States or whatever might have a hard time tracking this down. But uh, I'm glad I was able to get one relatively easy. I pre-ordered it from EB Games, which is the store where I do buy a lot of my Funko Pops and other action figures. Um, because there is another um, kind of a standard release of uh, Stanley. And it's Florida Stanley. So it's based on a specific episode when the crew of the office went down to Florida for some training uh, after the company gets bought by Sabre. And uh, it's a fun figure, and it's Stanley in a nice, fun, you know, white suit. Um, however, I want these figures to kind of represent how these characters looked most of the time. I don't really like very, like, super specific looks. Like, even with Kevin, um, the Kevin figure that they gave us, he's got this big pot of chili and oven mitts, you know, which is funny, but at the same time, that little joke where he comes into the office with a big pot of his chili that he drops on the floor and spills everywhere is only about 30 seconds of Kevin out of nine seasons worth of material. So I don't really like anything that super specific. The fact that Stanley has a pretzel, that is specific, but it's not... Uh, so specific that's distracting from the figure. So I think this is pretty much the perfect Stanley and it's much preferred than the, the standard Florida Stanley version. Now this here is Dargon, the heroic leader of the Sectors. This is a brand new toy line from Zika Toys. And you can see here, they've got some really nice character specific card art on the front of the packaging that shows 
Dargon in all of his glory, as well as a bit of an establishing shot of the world that he comes from. On the back of the package, you see there's a little bit of a bio that explains the history of the world of Sectors. So that planet that they live on, you'll see here it's called Symbion. And it's about these insect people that are in battle. So there's the good guys, the bad guys, and you see all the other figures available in the line on the back. So here is Dargon out of the package. And let me just tell you, that was not an easy decision to make. I normally open up all of my toys, but there are certain ones that I like to keep sealed on their card. And Dargon was a figure that I really thought I would probably keep sealed. Um, the reason for that is um, I don't really plan on collecting the full line of sectars. Um, I was probably just going to get a one-off. Like this was, I was intending this to be my only one. And it's got that really cool card art with the unique character artwork. Because some toy lines, like say Ninja Turtles, they might just put the four turtles on every package regardless of which turtle you're buying or if it's Shredder or Bebop or whatever. So I really like, like on the classic G.I. Joe cards and on the Star Wars cards, when they have the unique character that you're buying and it's really nice artwork as well. It's not just some photograph from a movie or something. Like somebody actually took some time and painted that. And it's a really nice looking piece of art. And sometimes I like to just pin these things up on my wall so they can be admired. And I don't like doing that necessarily with G.I. Joes and stuff because as you can see in the background there, I usually open my G.I. Joes and I want to add figures to my collection. But when it comes to something like this, that's just kind of a one-off item, that's the kind of thing that's perfect for me to just pin on the wall and enjoy it. However, the more I looked at this thing, the more I was just itching to play with it. So I just kind of had to open them up. Now what I did do is I sliced along the, the side of the bubble here so I can maybe slide him back in there and I might still be able to pin this to my wall and it will still look complete at least with the figure inside but uh, yeah I had to slice him open to check him out and I am glad I did because my first impression is that he's really cool like uh, let's take a closer look at him here so he's got this uh, like nice metallic color on his armor there he's got a couple little holsters on his side uh, you know you can see his articulation like he's Good movement there with the double jointed knees. He moves at the elbow. Not only does he turn at the wrist, but he also has a joint so his wrist can move to the side. Um, he doesn't have any sort of ab crunch there, but uh, he does turn at the waist a little bit. Uh, his head, so he's got a ball joint there on the top of his neck so he can look side to side and up and down a little bit. Um, so yeah, and he just looks really cool. And uh, he's got a bunch of accessories too, which I didn't realize. It's hard to tell inside the packaging. But here he's got a little, a little shield. He's got a little, like what is this? I can't tell if this is a gun or a knife. I think it's a gun. Then he's got these two little pistols. So these are the things I'm sure they can be holstered on his belt there. Then he's got... A sword and then there's this little strap that came with them which I'm not entirely sure what that does yet I'll have to figure that out and then he came with uh, let's see here a whole mess of extra hands it looks like there's about eight of them so you know he's got open hands there or he's got gripping hands so he can hold his weapons or he's got closed fists so this is the kind of thing that you see pretty regularly with Marvel Legends, like six inch figures, but you don't see that very often with three and three quarter inch figures. So uh, yeah, that's quite a lot of accessories for such a little guy. And so let's talk about the scale for a second. So like I said, this guy's uh, about three and three quarter inches, maybe closer to four. Like he's to scale pretty much with like a modern GI Joe figure. You could definitely integrate these two lines together. And, uh, and that's pretty different for the Sectors, because I know I said this was a new line by Zika, but they did not actually create the concept. Um, I think they've just kind of either taken over the license, or I'm not exactly sure how the legalities of it work. But the Sectors were actually a 1980s toy line that were produced by Coleco back in 1985. And the figures back then were actually 
pretty big. Like, I'm not sure the exact scale. I don't have any of the vintage figures to show you. But they were bigger than He-Men. Um, they were probably about seven to eight inches tall, which was kind of an odd scale, which is one of the reasons I never got into collecting them because they didn't really match up with anything else I was collecting. They were too big for G.I. Joes and too big for He-Man. Um, another thing, I just was never really keen on the design. Like, I love bugs, so an idea of bug people in a toy line would be great. But when you look at this guy, I just kind of thought his design was kind of corny. Just some blonde dude with big buggy eyes and these kind of stupid antennas coming out of his head. So yeah, it didn't appeal to me as a kid. But uh, kind of the nostalgia factor uh, really makes me dig it this time around. And I think it actually looks a lot better than the vintage figure. There's just a lot more detail kind of throughout the sculpt. Um, but one thing that was interesting with the the vintage toy line, and I'm curious to see if they bring it back, is for vehicles, the figures kind of rode on giant bugs. And how that worked is you, the bugs were essentially puppets, and you would put your hand inside of the bug, and you would control all the bug legs, and you could place your figure kind of on the back of your hand, and he would ride around. And it was kind of an interesting concept. I had friends that had a few of them. Um, so Prince Dargon here, He's the leader of the good guys, and he rode around on a dragonfly called Dragon Flyer. So yeah, I'll be curious to see if uh, if Zika actually goes one step forward and actually makes some of the uh, the bugs for these guys to ride. I think the initial wave of these figures has been successful enough for them in that they've already announced that there's going to be a second wave of figures. Now, even though I was never really into the sectars as a kid, um, I was kind of surprised to learn that they actually did have an animated series. It was only a five episode miniseries. Um, I've never seen it, but if I had seen it, that might've enticed me to actually collect the figures because sometimes that's all it takes is just seeing th these characters come to life makes you want them. Um, and they also had a Marvel comic, but unlike GI Joe and Transformers and stuff that had these very long running comic books that made it out until like a hundred issues or so, the Sectors was just a mini-series. It was only eight issues. But I was surprised to learn that the first two issues of that were actually drawn by uh, Mark Teixeira, who is, in my opinion, the best Ghost Rider artist there's ever been. So yeah, it's kind of surprising that a big-name artist like that would be on a, a silly little toy book in the 80s. But that's pretty cool. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm so impressed with this figure that uh, I actually I don't think he's going to be a one-off anymore. I might uh, order a couple more of these guys once I put this video down. Because, yeah, I really uh, I like the way he feels. I like the way he moves. The amount of articulation and the amount of accessories. So let me plop those in there. So, yeah, pistol fits in there. Nice and snug. I don't know if I have the right hands on him to hold his sword. There you go. Yeah, these guys are just... Really cool. I dig him. I don't know if I can get his shield in this hand. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Sword, shield, pistols. Really cool. And this guy has another feature that I'm kind of excited about that I will show you right now. So check this out. He's got magnet feet. So that's really cool. Like. You can make these guys fight on the side of your refrigerator. Oh, it looks like I just lost one of the magnets. But yeah, he's got little magnets there you see in the front of his feet, as well as he's got pegs for a display stand in the back. But anyway, I think the magnet feet is a really cool idea. Um, the only thing that seems like something they maybe missed out on is this guy does not come with a display base. And is, you know, I'm glad that G.I. Joe's come with these display bases, but if the sectors had come with a metal display base that their magnet feet could stick to, that would be great. But uh, yeah, you can have these guys fight on the side of your refrigerator and stuff. It's just, uh, it's really cool. Yeah, they maybe need a little bit of more glue in here because they're not staying super great. But still, that's pretty cool. I dig it a lot. So yeah, that's uh, Prince Dargon from Sectars. Zika Toys has also recently released this line of Captain Action figures. So I have ordered just one of them for now. So again, you see some character-specific artwork on the front. Like this here is Captain Action. He's kind of the main hero of the line. And he was available 
uh, in three different colors, the blue, purple, and gray. So this card art here does have him displayed in his purple uniform, which matches the figure that I got. Now here you see the back of the card. So it differs a little bit from the Sector's card. Um, it does not have a bio explaining who Captain Action is. Um, and it does have a cross promotion so you can see all the other figures available in the line. But rather than showing you actual pictures of the figures, like they did on this card, they just show you the, uh, the artwork specific to each character. So you can see there we've got Captain Action, Captain Evil, Jet Jungle, the Captain's Evil Henchman, Action Jackson, and lastly, this guy's name is cut off, but I believe he's another type of henchman. So, pretty cool card. I really like the artwork on there, and it looks uh, really nice. And here is Captain Action outside of the packaging. So, like Dargon, I had every intention of keeping him in the package, since I thought he would probably be the only figure from this Captain Action line that I buy. Um, however, I liked Dargon so much that I just had to pop this guy open too. And, uh, he constructed in the same way. So he's got the same articulation, all that sort of stuff. Uh, he looks really great. Now, like the Sectars, Captain Action is an old toy line that has been revived by Zika. But these guys are even older. These guys are from before my time. So the first Captain Action was released back in 1966. And the idea was that this was kind of, uh, to compete with uh, G.I. Joe. So it was made by a company called Ideal Toys. And uh, so kind of like how G.I. Joe wasn't really a bunch of characters like we know them today, like Snake Eyes and Duke. G.I. Joe was kind of just a general army man and you could kind of change his outfits. That was the same with Captain Action. So he was just kind of a generic doll and you could buy all of these different outfits to dress him up like various uh, pop culture icons. And the really cool thing about Captain Action back then is that they had all kinds of licenses that you wouldn't expect one company to get a hold of. So they had Marvel characters, so you could dress your Captain Action up like Spider-Man or Captain America. Then they had the DC license, so you could dress Captain Action up like Batman or Superman. And then they had other random things like the Lone Ranger or like Buck Rogers or the Phantom. So you could dress him up like pretty much anybody. So that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, he came out in 1966. In 1967, they introduced his villain, uh, Dr. Evil, who I assume for licensing reasons, like with Austin Powers, they can't call the villain Dr. Evil anymore. Uh, that's why he's called, uh, on the back of the package there, just Captain Evil instead of Dr. Evil. And you can see he looks quite a bit different. He's still got the blue skin, but now he's more like a straight clone of Captain Action rather than this weird... Uh, weird dude with his exposed brain like the vintage figure and yeah anyway the Captain Action line was cancelled in 1968 so it was pretty short lived so uh, yeah it was well before my time but uh, I still really dig the look of this figure and like the Sectars he comes with quite a few accessories so once I opened him up there I got this whole bag of stuff so you can see he's got alternate hands his hat some weapons it looks like an alternate head so let's pop this open and take a look at all this stuff. Okay, so like Dargon, we've got a bunch of extra hands. So it looks like eight different hands uh, with him as well. And same idea, you've got the open hand, the closed fist, the gripping hands. So lots of variety there. Um, for weapons, he's got this really cool sword, kind of a like lightning bolt painted into it. Then he's got one little pistol which is kind of a really cool reflective silver paint. And I'm wondering if this can fit in his holster here. Um, maybe. Yeah, it kind of fits in there. And then he's also got another silver gun. Now, this is a really cool like sci-fi looking laser rifle. So yeah, that's a pretty cool weapon. I like that one a lot. And so then he's got an alternate head and I'm not sure what the story behind this is, but uh, they both, I'm not sure what these are based on. Maybe this is kind of his newer design and this one is supposed to look more like the vintage toy. I'm, I'm really not sure, but uh, that's pretty cool. I like them both. They're both really well sculpted and really well painted. And then lastly, he's got his hat. So 
that's kind of a softer rubber and it fits on there nicely. So there you go. There's Captain Action all armed up and he's really cool. And yeah, I think I'm doomed to buy some more of these things because I really like it. So there you go. There's Captain Action. Yeah, this is a really fun feature. I love it. Now, as cool as all that stuff was, I'm really eager to talk to you about this figure, which I just got in the mail today. Um, this is the new Conan the Barbarian figure from Super 7. And yeah, I've been waiting on this one for a while. And yeah, it's got some really nice packaging. So let's take a closer look um, at it inside the box, and then we'll pop it open and take a look at it loose. So here's a closer look at the box. And you can see you've got this really nice artwork um, that's on the front and it wraps around to the two sides. So you get this really nice image. And uh, this is taken directly from the comic book cover for the very first issue of Conan uh, published by Marvel back in 1970. On the back here, you've got uh, just a nice big title block that says Conan the Barbarian. And this here is just a sleeve that slides right off of there. So underneath the sleeve, you can see kind of just a little bio, a little bit of history of Conan the Barbarian. It's written in this really kind of faint text over the red. It's kind of, it can be a little difficult to read. I think it's, the camera's picking it up pretty good there. So that's kind of nice looking. Same thing on the side, you get this artwork that can almost be a little tough to see because it's just kind of printed red on red, but it's a different uh, kind of glossy uh, printing on there. So it looks pretty nice. And there you see the figure. So it's got this nice stark red box, looks really nice. You see the figure, you see his weapons, you see his alternate head. Yeah, just a really nice presentation. So uh, yeah, it's almost a shame to open this guy up because he looks so nice, but that's what we're gonna do. So let's take a look at him outside of the box. So here is Conan outside of the packaging. Now Conan, since he was produced by Super 7, that's the same company that's been making Masters of the Universe Classics figures for the last few years. And Conan here uses the same buck, like the same sculpting and design as the Masters of the Universe Classics. So if you collect those figures, then you know what you're gonna get here. So the articulation, it moves like any Masters of the Universe character and uh, yeah, it moves pretty good. Um, now I have seen some people complain that this, uh, the amount of articulation he has is maybe a little out of date because this buck that they've been using on He-Man since 2009 yeah, it, it lacks like the double articulated knees and all that stuff that you're seeing on more modern figures. But uh, I think it works really well for the Masters of the Universe style figures. And if the idea of this figure is to have a Conan that fits in seamlessly with your Masters of the Universe, I'm glad they didn't, you know, tweak the articulation too much. I'm glad he's on that same standard buck because I think it, it looks really great. Now, uh, you'll notice here I already switched out the head. So he came with an alternative head. This is a more kind of mellow head, but it pops off relatively easily. So here you see him with his head off. So if you wanted to get rid of this necklace, you can do that. But we'll leave that on and we're going to pop his yelling head back on here. So there you go. There's yelling Conan. Now, uh, I'm not a hardcore Conan fan. I'm a pretty casual fan. Uh, you know, like he's been around since the 30s, um, you know, and published in short stories and stuff like that. My first exposure to him was in um, probably the movies. I, I, I don't know. I might have seen him in comic books before the movies because Marvel has been publishing uh, Conan comic books since 1970. Um, but then he was in the Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, uh, Conan the Barbarian in 1982 and Conan the Destroyer in 1984. So I don't know if, I've, uh, if I saw the comics or the movies first. Um, I never collected the Conan comics. Um, however, I did end up, I'm not sure how or why, I have one Conan magazine. So the comic book was just called Conan or maybe Conan the Barbarian. And that was published in standard comic book size and in color and all that stuff. But then there was kind of a little bit of a darker um, magazine. So the stories were a little more grown up and it was called The Savage Sword of Conan. And that was published in a magazine format in black and white. And I had one issue of The Savage Sword of Conan. And I must have read that thing dozens of times. Like, I absolutely loved it. Uh, it was gritty and, you know, it showed Conan as a total badass and a womanizer. And I loved it. So I don't know why I never really got into collecting more Conan stuff. 
But uh, yeah, this is a really cool figure. I'm glad I finally have it. And when Super 7 said they were going to produce this thing, I was kind of hoping for a, a different style of Conan because I don't necessarily associate him with this spiky helmet. Um, I usually imagine him more the way Frank Frazetta would paint him with just kind of the, the bangs and the hair hanging flat. So that's kind of the Conan I was maybe hoping for. And Mezco is actually releasing a figure of that Frank Frazetta style Conan soon, which I think is really cool. But uh, I don't know if it's necessarily cooler than this. Like I'm, I might end up buying that one as well, but uh, I really end up liking this one. Now that I have it in hand, I think it looks really great. And I don't mind the horn helmet at all. Now, since we do have two heads, and I am glad that they gave us the alternate head, so it's not just the uh, the yelling one, but we have the the cool and collected one as well. But I was kind of hoping we would maybe get a helmeted head and a non-helmeted head. But uh, Super 7's already begun releasing more Conan figures. They've, they've released the first wave of figures based on the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. And again, I thought I would maybe buy those, but then when I saw the Conan they put out, he's got this big woolly jacket on and he's got a helmet on again and still not the Conan that I really think of when I think Conan but I'm assuming they're gonna do a wave two and uh, I'll probably end up buying a Conan with maybe some more paint on them or something like that so this is probably my first of many Conan figures to come now uh, Conan now like I said he's been around a long time and He-Man who this figure is basically part of the He-Man uh, classics toy series uh, He-Man was largely inspired by Conan. And I think when Mattel was making the Masters of the Universe classic figures, they wanted to get a Conan-like figure into the series. So they previously released a couple of barbarian figures which serve as kind of stand-ins for Conan. So here you see Conan with the Mattel-produced Vicor and Vicron, both of which are kind of Conan stand-ins. Now this guy here is a little goofy, I don't care for him so much, but uh, this one here actually makes for a pretty good Conan figure. I was pretty happy with this one. Again, I would have rathered or maybe a removable helmet or a head without the helmet, but I thought this guy was pretty great. But I feel even he is now overshadowed by this figure. I really like this figure and I think he's superior to both of those other kind of previous attempts. So now let's talk about his accessories a little bit. So he's got the alternative head, then he's also got the sword, so that fits in his hand nice and easy. And then he's got this spear with these spiky tips. And these accessories are seen on that cover of issue one of the 1970s Marvel comic, because um, that's exactly the artwork that this figure is inspired by, so it makes sense that we would get those weapons. And then lastly, he has this dagger, and it, pull, you'll see there's a little, uh, kind of plugs into the side of his shorts there. However, I've seen other people online say that it does not stay in place very well at all. So in the packaging, you can kind of see there's this clear elastic band around his waist that's just there to kind of hold the thing in place while it's in the package. You're supposed to take that off, but I think I'm going to leave that on there just so the dagger stays in place. You can't really notice it unless you're really looking, looking hard at it. So there you go, there's Conan, I think he's awesome. Now, just that alone, I would have been satisfied, but when I opened up my Conan, there was an extra little box in there. It says, to the death. Thank you for your support from Super 7. Now, honestly, I can't remember if they told us this was coming in advance. I know this wasn't part of the initial pre-order when I bought this figure like a year or more ago, but uh, they might've told us at some point they were giving us a bonus gift, or maybe this was just intended to be a surprise. I, I don't know. but. What we got here is the exact same weapons that we already have, except these are all bloodied up. So that is a really cool bonus. I like that a lot. So very cool. I really like this figure. Very impressed with it. Way more than I expected to like it. And uh, yeah, I think Conan is probably a, I don't know if he's a contender for my toy of the year, but he's definitely gonna make my list of best of the year. So yeah, very cool stuff. And one last thing before I go, I just wanted to shout out a buddy of mine, Matt Sullivan, 
who is a super hardcore Conan fan. He's been a Conan maniac for as long as I've known him. I uh, hope he doesn't mind me showing this picture of him from Halloween when he went out as Conan. Um, he's probably worn this dozens of times, though. Uh, anyway, Matt is now uh, working on officially licensed Conan materials, and he has written the source book, uh, Monolith, for the Conan board game that's out now. So if you're watching my video because you're a big Conan fan uh, and you haven't checked out this game yet, uh, maybe do that because my buddy Matt is writing it and uh, I'm sure it's awesome. So there you go. Check out Conan Monolith by Matt Sullivan. So that is just some of my new stuff that I've gotten in the past couple of weeks. So uh, like I said, I'll be back pretty soon with another video to show you some more of my new stuff because I've got more cool stuff to show you. So uh, please stay tuned for that. That'll probably be posted in the next few days. So uh, as always, thank you very much for watching, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me comments below, and uh, I'll see you next time. Ciao.